What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to edit images using Stable Diffusion, or to be specific, using the in-painting feature of Stable Diffusion. We're going to learn how to add new things to the image. We're going to learn how to remove things from the image or how to change certain aspects of the image entirely using AI. So let us get right into it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get Stable Diffusion running on our system. And the simplest way to do that is by using the Stable Diffusion web UI. For this, you will find a link in the description down below to this GitHub repository. And all you have to do here basically is scroll down to the installation section and then follow the four instructions here for Windows or the four instructions here for Linux. Now, in my case, I was not able to just run this command here. So the first step is to install the dependencies on Linux and the second one is to run this command. Uh, for some reason, it didn't work for me. I had to download the repository and then to run the web UI shell script file but maybe it works for you out of the box. For Windows, I actually already have a video on this channel where I show you how to set it up. Um, and on Linux, as I said, it's not too complicated. You either just install the dependencies and run the command or you install the dependencies and you download the repository and then you run the web UI shell script. So uh, in my case, I already have this installed or downloaded. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to run the web UI shell script. And this will then open up um, stable diffusion here on localhost. So I can click on it, it opens up stable diffusion. And what we're interested here in particular is not stable diffusion in general, not the image generation with the text to image feature, not the basic image to image, but the in painting feature from image to image. So in painting basically means we take an image, we select certain areas, and then we change them, we add something to the image, we remove something from the image very similar to the new Photoshop feature that I saw in a video recently. Now I myself am not using Photoshop, so I don't really know what I'm talking about here. But I saw that Photoshop has this new feature uh, where you can use generative AI to add stuff to the image to change stuff in the image to remove something from the image and so on. Um, and this is very similar to that, but it's free and open source. So to do proper in painting, we don't want to use the basic stable diffusion checkpoint, we want to use uh, the in painting checkpoints. So we want to go to hugging face to get this SDV15 in painting checkpoint. To this, you will also find a link in the description down below. You just open it and you download it. Where is it? Uh, this is the download button here. We're going to save this to the desktop. And this has four gigabytes. So it will take some time here. While it is downloading, I'm going to explain basically uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get some random images. Now we're going to get them from Pixabay, for example. Uh, and we're going to change things about them. So for example, I'm going to say person standing or something. And then we're going to just pick any of the people here that are standing some image that looks uh, not too complicated to edit, maybe this guy here. Actually, I used this image when preparing the video. So we're going to just download a basic version of that. Now, stable diffusion works better on smaller resolutions. So you can go with uh, whatever resolution you want. But I'm going to go with the smallest one here, because that is going to give us probably the best results. So we're going to save this on the desktop man.jpg. And maybe we also want to have something like dock at the beach or something if we if we can find this. So this is sponsored, this is royalty free. So maybe we can take um, what are we going to take? Maybe this one here. Also small resolution doc.jpg. And we're going to play around with those two. I'm not sure if they're going to work or not. But we're going to try to change uh, certain things about them. So for example, for the man, what we're going to do is we're going to try to replace this black leather jacket with a red jacket, for example, or a golden jacket. Um, or we're going to replace the shirt with another color with another type of clothing, the shoes, maybe. Uh, and what's a little bit more difficult, and I'm not sure if this is going to work, because it usually doesn't work when I try it is we can try to add something uh, into the hand. So something that doesn't exist at all here, something like a knife, for example. Um, usually this doesn't work, or you have to try a couple of times until it works, but we're going to try it. Uh, and for the dock, maybe we can add some item here, maybe we can change the water to sand. So it's a dock in a desert or something. 
uh, we will play around with that as well. Now the checkpoint is downloaded. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this checkpoint. Uh, we're going to take it and we're going to into stable diffusion and you want to go into your models. But for some reason, I think in my case, uh, it created stable diffusion inside of stable diffusion. So actually the directory that I have to go in is I have to go into the stable diffusion web UI inside of the stable diffusion web UI. And here I have to go into models, whatever, just go to models, go to uh, stable diffusion and just paste your in painting checkpoint here. So this is the in painting checkpoint. Now, in stable diffusion, you can now click this reload button. And you should be able to select a checkpoint, which is optimized for in painting, meaning that this is a checkpoint that is powerful when it comes to in painting. Uh, while this is loading here, what we're going to do is we're going to load an image of the man, for example, and we're going to provide a prompt. So for example, uh, man with golden jacket, maybe also just golden jacket, something like this. Um, and then what we're going to say here as a negative prompt as something that the image should not be, we're going to say that this is uh, a black leather jacket or just a black jacket. Um, so right now we didn't select anything for in painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the brush size and we're going to select the areas of the image that we want to change. And I'm just going to draw here roughly over the leather jacket part, I'm going to fill this with a mask, so I'm going to mask all of this here. I'm going to do the same thing here on the left side. And you don't have to be super precise with that you can also just um, paint over st the stuff that's not necessarily the jacket. So if I also paint over this here, it won't cause too many issues. The important thing is if you don't paint over something, it will stay the same. So if you forget to paint over pixels of the black jacket, the black jacket will not be replaced entirely because you can only replace what you paint over. So this is now the jacket selected. And now we have some settings down here. So the sampling steps are basically how many iterations, how many steps you want to uh, do while sampling. I usually set this to something between 60 and 80. Let's go with 80 now, or let's go with 70. Maybe uh, the width and height is important because you want to keep the ratio usually. So in this case, the height is greater than the width. And you can actually see this ratio when adjusting, you can see it at the top, the red box here, you can see when the height fits or when the ratio fits. So we can also adjust the width. So we can go for a lower resolution. There you go. So this is now the perfect resolution. And the other parameters here are uh, CFG scale, I don't know exactly what CFG stands for actually it tells us here classifier free guidance scale. Basically, the lower this number is the more creative the model is going to be the larger the number is the more it's going to focus exactly on your prompt. And I think it actually also says that here. So lower values produce more creative results. Uh, I usually leave this at seven. And then we have the denoising strength, uh, the more the higher this number is, the more the closer it is to one, the more it will replace the image that's currently here. And the smaller the number is, the more it's going to focus on what's already there. And I think this is also uh, saying that here at zero, nothing will change at one, you will get an unrelated image. So everything in between is orienting itself more to something new and unrelated or to what is already there. That's the basic idea. So let's just give it a try. The important thing is that you set this to fill when you're trying to replace something completely. Um, and then we're going to generate and see what happens now. This is a little bit slower than usual because I'm recording and you can already see this one doesn't look too good. This doesn't look like it worked. Uh, and we can try now a couple of times. Because sometimes it's just not going to work the first try sometimes it's going to give you a funny result. So in this case, for example, it gives me a blue jacket. Um, so not exactly what I'm looking for. We can try a couple of times. And once you find something that you like, you can also copy the seat and you can try to change it slightly. So let's just repeat this a couple of times until we get something like gold, golden. Maybe we can also do yellow. And here we can say black, dark.
Uh, now it adds some more gold to it, but it's still a blue jacket fundamentally. Maybe we can increase this to like 0 0.9 to be less related to what's already there. And you can see, hopefully, this is not influencing the recording too much. Probably it is. Let's see. So I'm not sure if you hear everything I say while this is uh, generating because it seems like my recording is lagging while I'm generating this. Uh, so I'm going to try to only speak when it's not generating. But the idea is that the higher you set this denoising strength, the less it will focus on what's already there, usually. So we can also try to set this to one and it will try to replace it completely. You can also increase this to make it focus more on what you're writing. Uh, and you have to play around with this. So even if you have the perfect settings, you're not going to get the best results every time. Sometimes you have to try 50 times to get a good replacement. So we can also just skip. If you see that this is not what you're looking for, you can also just skip immediately. And you can do this a couple of times here. Now, if this does not work with the next couple of tries, I'm going to actually do something here. I'm going to... All right, so let's try to adjust some settings here. Maybe let's try to increase this a little bit. Maybe it helps. Or maybe we have to keep the prompt simpler. So maybe we just have to say black or actually golden jacket, black jacket. Maybe this is enough. Oh, it looks better. And now it's silver or blue. Okay, let's try again. Oh, there you go. A little bit better. And a good thing now is also what you can do is you can instead of working with this image here, you can also just take this one, and you can send to in paint to continue working on this one. So for example, I can now use the same prompt, the same settings here <clears throat> on this one. Maybe I can also adjust this to be 0 0.85. And now I have something golden as a basis, and it will probably make this better. There you go. <clears throat> so now you can see we have a golden jacket instead of a uh, instead of a black jacket. And of course, we can also try to send this to in paint to select the area. And now since this is already pretty much what we're looking for, we can also change the mode from fill to original. And we can turn this down to something like 0 0.4. And maybe we want to turn this back to seven. And this will then optimize the image for what we already have. Hopefully. So it will most likely let me just mark a little bit more. should look a little bit better. There you go. Looks like a golden jacket now. So we can send this to in paint. And now we want to change the white shirt to something else. So maybe I want to mask all of this here. There you go. And I want to say from a white shirt, change this to a red shirt, for example. Actually, the other way around, this would be white shirt. And this would be red shirt. And now, of course, we want to use fill, we want to turn this up again to 0 0.9 or something. And we want to see if this is enough. Oh, okay, now it's replacing, it cannot replace the jacket, though, actually, unless the mask is invalid. Yeah, I think it still uses the old mask. This is a buck. So we need to rerun this again. It still had for some reason selected the jacket. So select all of this generate. And you can see it works immediately. We have a red shirt below the yellow or below the golden jacket. Uh, and it looks kind of realistic. It looks like he actually wears a red shirt. And of course, you can also adjust this you can uh, play around with this. If you want to use the exact same seat, you can use this button here to reuse the seat. And then you can change the settings slightly, if you just want to have slightly different results. Um, and now we can do something else like we can send this to in paint again, we can 
then select the shoes. This is the last thing that I'm going to do with this guy here. We can say I want to have white shoes instead of gray shoes. And I think this will be a little bit more difficult, but let's see. Uh, there you go. Okay, now he has, oh, he has white shoes. Works first try. It's not more difficult. There you go. So now we have a guy with a golden jacket, a red shirt and white shoes. Uh, and of course, this is now not the most high quality result that you can get. This was a very first try approach. If you want to have realistically looking perfect results, you can just try again and again and again. You can reuse the image. You can uh, go into original mode with a denoising strength of 0 0.2 or 0 0.15 to just slightly adjust the image and stuff like that. Uh, this is very powerful, but this already looks quite good if you think about what we had uh, in the beginning, which is this image here. So let's try the second one. Let's try the dock. Um, usually it's quite difficult to spawn objects here, but maybe you want to remove this one here. So this should be quite simple. Uh, maybe I want to just select this and also this line here, something like that. Uh, and I want to say something like dock at the beach, see sand, and then objects, yellow, or maybe just yellow object. Maybe this is enough to remove this. So in painting, we want to fill, we want to maybe use 0 0.8 or something. Um, and maybe we want to use zero or 60 sampling steps here. Yeah, let's see if that works. Now we need to also change the resolution. Um, for some reason, this is not shown correctly, but let's see if it works anyways. There you go. It actually works. It seems to remove the object and the rest of the image is the same. So we can send this to inpainting now again. And now we can change other things about the image. So for example, maybe I want to spawn uh, a treasure chest here. Now this is where it gets difficult, I think. I don't think this will work too easily. But I was wrong before, maybe it works first try. But I don't think that this works too easily here. Because now I have to spawn something that's not there at all. So actually, I would have to go with a one here. Um, and I think it will be quite difficult, to be honest. But let's see, maybe I'm wrong about this. So let's go with treasure chest. And I'm going to just say C as a negative here. Maybe we get a treasure, a treasure chest. But as you can see, in the first try, it doesn't work. Nothing spawns there. Uh, we can try again. Uh, usually it works randomly at some point, but most of the time it doesn't work. So maybe we can increase this here to just force it to be less creative and just force the, the prompt. But this also doesn't work in this case. Um, so we can try a couple more times. Yeah, difficult. Um, maybe we can... Uh, set this back to seven, but maybe we can set this to original here, which I don't think makes a lot of sense, but maybe it can produce some results. Nope, doesn't look like it. Uh, maybe we can give it more area to use so that it can adjust the surroundings better. But if this doesn't work, I can show you at least uh, some results that I already had before making this video. But let's try maybe two more times. Oh, this actually seemed to try to spawn something. But doesn't look like it's going to work. Maybe we can try one more time with a different prompt like chest, uh, treasure, wooden box. And then we can say here, sea, water, sand as a negative. And maybe we can somehow force it uh, to create something here but it doesn't look like it. Um, before I show you what I managed to do yesterday, maybe we can do it with a sketch. So now we have um, actually, let me just send this to in painting again. Uh, actually, not this one. Send this to in paint sketch. 
Uh, okay, forget about it. We're going to just manually open this, we can go to stable diffusion. And then to output. Where's outputs, there's outputs image to image. And uh, here we can pick this image here as a base image. And we can sketch a chest maybe I don't know, I don't think that this will work. But you know, we can try here. So I can just fill this with some brown color representing wood, and then maybe some gold gold like colors to, I don't know, make it look like a chest or something. I don't know. We can try like this. Um, yeah, so that would be that maybe let's go with a nine here. And let's see if it works with the fill mode. Oh, there you go. Now it looks like something is happening. At least a little bit. There you go. It generates an actual chest. Okay, this looks promising. Let's try again. Let's see if this was a coincidence. Uh, this is not too good. Let's try again. This looks better. Okay, so sketching seems to have um, seems to yield some results here. Now it doesn't look perfect. But what we can do now is we can send this to in paint. So this this image here, we can send it to in paint, we can select this area here. And we can then say, um, okay, let me select this again. And then say that what we have is already quite good, but we want to change it. So we want to go for original, want to go with something like 0.4 again here, and want to keep the prompt. So this could actually improve the chest. Oh, looks pretty good. Now let's increase this maybe to 0 0.55 to have more changes to the chest so that it actually looks like it's, it's actually a chest. And this looks already quite promising. So send to in paint again, maybe do one more iteration. And maybe we can change it also to say sea and water as a negative, but here chest in sand, something like this. And this now looks way more realistic, it looks like there's actually a chest besides the dock. And we can send this now to in painting and we can do something like change the entire background, we can say it's no longer a dock at the beach, if I select all the water, I can actually do this. And now I want to say, okay, this is not a C. No, uh, or actually this, we have to put it down here, sea, water, ocean, beach. This is dock in front, or actually, let's, let's forget about the dock, let's just say sunset, blue sky. And let's see what we get here as a result. Uh, actually, what are the settings where you, let's go with fill and let's go with 0 0.9 for this one. And now what we get is something that doesn't look too, I think it's still selecting the chest, I have the same problem as before and it sucks. Alright, so now the chest should no longer be selected. So let's go and try to generate this doesn't work first try. Okay, the problem is, since I'm so close to the dock, it changes the dock and it changes the chest. So maybe uh, let's try to just say 0 0.6. Hmm, doesn't seem to work too well. Let's go with blue sky. Let's go with sea, ocean, water as a negative. So maybe it can, it can just change water to sky and this would already be some progress that we can use for another in painting. But it doesn't seem to work too well. And maybe we can get better results with original here. So maybe we can uh, set the denoising strength to 0 0.45 or something and we'll change the water to sky.
This is what I hope for at least. No, it still looks like water. So let's try uh, 0 0.65 maybe, which is quite a bit more. Okay, but it, it doesn't seem to work too well now. Uh, I'm going to show you something that did work, just so you, you believe me that it actually worked. I did something similar with a different image. I'm going to show you that. So this is how it started. This is a dock at the beach. And I added a chest to it. So I had to try a couple of times, as you can see. So then we got this chest. And then I changed the sky to a clear sky. And then I changed it to a sunset a couple of times. And then I changed the dock to just a dock lying in the sand. Uh, then I change it back. And yeah, you can see that it works, but it doesn't work every time. So this year looks actually quite realistic. You have a dock in the desert with a sunset. Uh, and the original image was was this one. So it does work, but it doesn't work always, you have to try a couple of times, you have to change the prompts, uh, you have to adjust the parameters, you have to try multiple times with the same prompts and the same parameters. It is not predictable and it is AI, it's not an algorithm. So you will have to just try and fail and try and fail again. Um, yeah, but this is how you do in painting with stable diffusion. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.